Alrighty, for the last time, the third time and the last time, we will be doing our New York Rangers and EA Sports NHL 22 ratings. How would I rate them? So, for the third time and the final time, uh, last updated was 1210. Was that the, no, that was the first time we did it, I think. I don't know. Last time I did it was post trade deadline, so I'm not sure. Uh, but for those of you that are unfamiliar with how EA Sports NHL works, we are rating solely, solely on the categories on a star basis. This time around, I actually added potential and abilities because as many of you know, EA Sports NHL has zoned and superstar abilities. Now, I didn't specify zone or superstar, I just put flat out abilities. The same fucking thing anyways. If any of you have played the game, it's trash. But anyways, so... Ignore what's on the left. This is just what I had predicted as uh, from when the season started. Obviously, that did not come to fruition. But on the right-hand side is the template for what the players are being rated off of. So, for the forward line one at the beginning of the season, this is what I had set out for the beginning of the season. So, day one, this is what I had set out. Now, the last day of the season, this is what we had. Kreider, Zibanejad, and Frankie Vitrano. So, Chris Kreider, as you see, went up four overall. Potential exact top six. I just don't think he's medium elite, despite having a 50 goal season. He's only got the one. You could argue medium elite, but uh, 87 overall, I think, is fair. Uh, the only thing I would change is I'd probably move his offense and shooting to four and a half stars instead of four if I was going to balance it out at all. Uh, def defense, I put up to four and a half stars because great defensive season. And I gave him two abilities crease crasher and big tipper. Not just because of his giant penis. Uh, if none of you have ever seen Kreider Dong, just Google Kreider Dong. It's not his naked penis, I promise. It's him in a golf event. I've already said too much. Uh, but this is just what I'd have him rated on, just as an individual. Uh, Mika Zibanejad deserved the role. I put him up to 89. You could argue 90. Uh, potential exact elite, and his abilities 1T, magnetic. Magnetic is just we're being able to receive shitty passes, which is what he has to receive all the time, unfortunately. All alone, which is advanced scoring on penalty shots, and breakaways, or shootouts. And seeing eye which is just snapping passes around. Oh, no, seeing eye is being able to shoot through a screen, which Zibanejad did oftentimes this season. Uh, and Frankie Vitrano, all the way on the right, his, his potential should be medium top six. I guess I forgot to put that in there. And no abilities deserved overall 83. I think that's fair. Shooting at four and a half stars. Not great puck skills, but good offensively. Not great defensively. Good physically. Put his physical from three to four. And skating, I left it four. Forward line two. This is a prediction at the beginning of the season. And this is what we finished with. Panarin, Strom, Andrew Cup. So for Panarin, for his potential, I put exact franchise. Uh, 92 overall. In the last video, I had him at 93. It's knocked him down one notch because of the playoffs. Uh, his abilities, tape to tape, puck on a string, third eye, send it, ankle breaker, and snipe. Tape to tape is being able to snap passes. Tape to tape. Uh, puck on a string is making moves at your top speed. Third eye is making passes when the player that you're passing to is out of your direct vision. Send it is long tape to tape saucer passes. Ankle breaker is, uh, oh no, puck on a string is being able to make regular moves. Ankle breaker is being able to make moves at your top speed. And snipe is being able to just snipe a freaking puck, which if Panarin shot more, you would have put that ability to use. Ryan Strom, exact top six, bump him up to 84, 85 overall from 84. I know, let's put 84. Never mind. You could argue 86, but I think 85 is fine. Uh, and Andrew Cott, I gave him exact top six. You can look at his stars and deserved overall 84 overall. I think it's fair. Not what I think is much better than 84. Uh, my phone just popped it off. Forward line three at the beginning of the season, we predicted Kravstov, Heedle, and Gauthier. We ended with Laffy, Heedle, and Kako. So for Lafreniere, I give potential high elite. Um, if he did not perform as well as he did in the playoffs, it would definitely be going down to medium elite. Uh, 80, uh, 84 overall, and I actually gave him three abilities. Tape to tape, quick pick, and puck on a string. Um... Again, tape to tape is snap and pass is tape to tape. Quick pick is actually the quick pick ability is uh, the ability to intercept passes as they go up the ice or knock down pucks that are saucer pass, whatever. We saw Laffy knock down a lot of passes and have a lot of interceptions this season. And puck on a string is being able to make those nice moves. Uh, I don't really think ankle breaker is in his archetype yet. Uh, Phil Heedle, give him that high top six. If he would have played in the playoffs as he did in the regular season, it'd probably be a high top nine or a medium top six, but damn it, he earned the high top six. No abilities, just 83 overall, straight up. Uh, beginning of the season, what we have him at 82, so he got better. He grew. 
Capo Caco, if he didn't play as well as he did in the playoffs, he might be getting a high top six, but he retains that medium elite potential. Shooting three and a half stars. The kid does not really have a great shot yet, but puck skills and offense up to four, three and a half star defense. I might knock that up to four. I'm pondering it. Physical and skating, both four. And I gave him three abilities. Magnetic, yoink, and unstoppable force. Magnetic is being able to corral loose pucks. Yoink is the ability to lift sticks and intercept the puck. Mostly happens on the forecheck. And unstoppable force is the ability to hold onto the puck despite being checked, hit, poke check, sick lifted, all that. And we saw Capo Caco kind of work the boards this offseason, pull some Sidney Crosby ass shit in the corner. So there you go. And I bumped his overall up to 83. Prior to the playoffs, I would have probably had him at 80. <laughs> Would not be a video without a yawn. Uh, fourth line, beginning of the season, was Reeves, Goudreau, and Blay. Beginning of the season, it was Reeves, Goudreau, and Mott. Ryan Reeves, exact bottom bottom six, 79 overall. Um, Goudreau, exact top nine, 83 overall. No abilities, not really super here. The only thing that really would have changed is Tyler Mott. I think in the game, he's 78 overall. I'd definitely be bumping his heads up to 82. And I'd consider giving him either the quick pick or the yoink ability. I'd consider it. And i give him exact top nine potential. Now, defensive pair one, beginning of the season, it was Lindgren and Fox. That really is not going to change, as you can see. But their overalls will change. Lindgren, I bumped up to an 87. And if Adam Fox up to a 93, so about Lindgren first. Put his potential from medium top four to high top four. I give him three abilities. Shut down, stick him up, and bounce back. Shut down is stick checking, uh, shot blocking, all things in the defensive zone. Stick him up is exactly what it sounds like. Really good at poke checking. And bounce back. The ability to fight through and not get injured. As Ryan Lindgren demonstrated 100 times in the playoffs. 87 overall, I think, is very fair. Adam Fox, medium franchise. Almost did high elite, but I think Adam Fox has earned the franchise tag. His abilities, tape to tape, third eye, quick pick, elite edges, seeing eye, and magnetic. Tape to tape is, again, tape to tape passes. Third eye is making passes to players that are outside of your direct vision. And still snapping them tape to tape. Quick pick, the ability to intercept passes, as Adam Fox did all season long. Elite edges. Have you seen this guy, Mohawk? Seeing eye, shooting through traffic. That's all of Fox's goals, shooting through traffic. And magnetic, the ability to corral, bouncing, and loose pucks. 93 overall. I think that's fair. Vets of pair two, we had Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba. That did not change. Keandre Miller, close to giving him high elite, but I think medium elite's more than fair. Although high elite could be in the near future if he has as good a season as he did uh, this year, next year. I actually gave Keandre Miller abilities. A lot of them. Wheels, elite edges, stick them up, ankle breaker, and truculence. Uh, wheels, speed with the puck. Elite edges, have you seen this guy's agility? Stick them up, quick stick, good poke check. Ankle breaker, making moves at top speed. Hot damn, did we see that? And truculence, shoulder checking, body checking, the ability to fend off and deliver checks. Deserved overall 87. I was close to giving him an 88. But I think 87's more realistic. Jacob Truba. Exact top four. He is not getting exact elite from me. I don't believe it to be true. I think 86 overall is just fine. You could argue he's 85. Maybe even lower. Uh, physical five stars. Ability shut down truculence and bouncer. Shut down is well, the same thing we said about Ryan Lindgren. The ability to poke check, block shots, win battles in the corners, yada, yada, yada. All in the defensive zone. Truculence. Same thing I just said on Counter Miller. The ability to deliver hits and fight off hits. And Bouncer, the ability to win net front battles and in a very aggressive manner, as we saw Jacob Trimmer do often. In a one-on-one -on -one foot race, race, I think my little sister, who doesn't even know how to skate, could beat him. However, if my little sister tried to take him on in front of the net, he would kill her. And he probably wouldn't hesitate. He's an animal. Defensive pair three, we thought it was going to be Nemeth and Lundqvist. Oh boy, were we wrong. Justin Braun and Braden Schneider take the stage. Now, Justin Braun, exact top six. Top six, not top six forward, but top six defensive pairing. 82 overall, I think that's fair. No abilities. No abilities for Braden Schneider. Not yet, but I gave him medium elite. What do you think about them apples? I think medium elite is a little pushy right off the rip, but it's still medium elite. And this kid did a lot more this season than anyone would have thought he did. He went from the W to the A to the NHL all in the same year. And then he was playing meaningful minutes on an NHL team in the NHL playoffs in the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. He doesn't do anything wrong. He's just good at everything. I actually almost gave him four-star offense. I almost gave him four stars across the board, but it's I Gave him 82 overall. I think that is fair. 
the goaltenders. Oh boy. Igor Shesterik in medium franchise. I bumped his overall up all the way to 94. We're talking about a goaltender that was an Art Ross. Not Art Ross. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hart Memorial Trophy candidate this season. Could still win it. 94 overall. Keep the change. A 940 or 930 something save percentage in the playoffs. Damn. Georgiev, medium starter. 80 overall. Don't expect him to be back next season. Scratches or taxi squad. Ignore where it says no changes. There are lots of changes. Hunt. McKegg. Rooney. Patrick. He who shall not be named. All of them got exact bottom six. Except for Nemeth who got top six. Because he's a top six fence. But I almost gave him seventh because he sucks. But nothing really changed here, guys. Actually, I think the overall is the exact same. I might have bumped Rudy a little bit. That's about it. Not necessarily bad. The top prospects where the fun comes in. These are the top prospects at the beginning of the season. Oh, boy. Top prospects updated. Will Cully, Brendan Ottman, Lori Pioniemi, Carlo Henriksen, and Brett Berard just to start. Will Cully, medium top six. None of them will have superstar abilities. They're too young to give them abilities yet. Just, just too young. 76 overall. Brennan Ottman, high top six. Was close to giving him low elite, but let the kid play first. Let him play. I see him as a Ryan Callahan type. A great disagree. I don't give a shit. I don't. Lori Pagliami, high top nine. That's fair. Carl Henriksen. Some shit does not change. The guy is not grown. I think he had nine points in 47 games in the SHL this season. He really kind of plateaued a bit. Medium top nine. Brett Berard, medium top six. I almost gave him high top six. But nope, medium top six is against fair. Top prospects continued. Oh, you thought I was done. You silly bitch, I am not. Zach Jones, high top four. 77 overall. He will be in the NHL next season. If he's not, he will be in the NHL on another team. Ryder Korzak, numero dos. High top nine. 78 points in 60-something games in the W this year. Keep the change. 73 overall, I think it's fair. He'll be in the AHL next year. Great hands. Great hands. Great passer. And Matthew Robertson. Medium top four. He does retain that medium top four. 74 overall. That's fair. And Dylan Garand. After a 944 save percentage in the WHL playoffs. The CHL playoffs. What the fuck he plays? I don't remember. I think it's a WHL. Yeah, he got the high starter. Not elite. Not elite. High starter. Maybe one day elite. Maybe. I don't know. But right now. High starter. 74 overall. And that is it. Told y'all. Quick video. And then a quick peek at the Rangers offseason video. So, speaking about that video, thinking about dumping it into two parts. I don't know what I'm going to do because a lot of that, that whole presentation is all over the place. It is a mix of everything I said I want and everything I think will happen. And I kind of want to separate into what I think will happen versus what I want to happen. Or just me being a chaos maniac because you know I like trades. But that's my uh, Rangers player overall potential all things alike predictions for NHL 22 at the end of the season you guys comment below your thoughts I know I missed a ton of top prospects so you can comment below anybody I missed or anyone you want to hear about that I miss any abilities out of some of your plays you think some abilities were misplaced you think some of my overalls were wrong you guys comment below I want to hear about it this is a lot of fun you know I like making these videos and there will be one in about two and a half months for the start of the 2022-2023 season how much will the Rangers roster change I don't know but you'll find out soon Thank you very much for watching. You're making an interesting video and hearing aids. How fast was that? You guys comment below your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.